not gonna work. The lighting is not going to work. Oh, I need my glasses. Oh, okay. No, I don't think anything's in the way. I do need my glasses, though. Uh, I'm gonna run and grab those real quick. <sighs> Too junky. Oh, it's okay. Just say this hey. is my mom's work spot. Oh yeah, no, they they know I'm in a different place. Okay. Um, All right, I'm gonna I'm go okay. grab I'm my glasses. Out okay, that works. That works. Mm -hmm. Uh, hey guys, I need my glasses, so I will be right back. There we go. Now I can see. I'm not in LA. I am in Charleston right now. I am home for the holidays and I haven't been in Charleston in about three years. So now this is my mom's office space and hopefully this little lamp here nice <laughs> as lighting. Oh, thank you. I appreciate you guys for watching my content. I wanted to hop on here because A, it's been a little nuts. Uh, yes, I'm back home. It's been a little nuts. Um, the process of me just like recording a ton of videos for you guys when I was in LA before I came home because I knew I wouldn't be able to record when I was home. But since I was doing all of that, um, I thought it'd just be easier to do a little quick q and I said I would go live on Instagram too. So let me, let me do that because I don't really go live much. Let me see. Sure, 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 sure. But what's happening, you guys? Do you have to do? Do you? Uh, in Charleston, I don't really take any dance classes or anything here. I'm here just to, honestly, y'all, just to sleep and eat some good Southern food, <laughs> and uh, just catch up with my family because I haven't seen them in a really in a really long time so uh here we go now we're on now we're on uh instagram too but yeah you some of you guys have been sending me messages in my uh dms and um i love chatting with you guys but some of them a i can't i can't because I'm not a physician, you guys. I'm not a doctor. So, like, if something hurts, uh, if something pains you, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't uh, help you. <laughs> but um, when it comes to, like, entrepreneurship or just building strength and stuff like that, I can. So there were a couple of questions. Um, I wrote them down since I know it would be live on Instagram, too, and I wouldn't be able to look at my phone but if you do have a question feel free to drop it in the chat um let's see where is it i just wrote it down oh here we are okay so this question was from david fuentes fuentes uh and it was on my my five things all college dance majors should know video um and he says, uh, thank you so much for sharing your experience. I'm 30 now. I've always dreamed of getting a BFA in dance. I hope you guys can't hear that airplane. It's really loud. Um, dreamed of getting a BFA in dance. I'd be literally starting from scratch, and it'd take me a while to get back on track since my body is not as responsive as it once was. Uh, even though I am a guy, I've always dreamed of going on point, and my desire has, been, has become stronger and stronger. I binge-watched The Point Shop on YouTube, 
and hopefully one day I'll be fitted for my own point shoes. Do you think it's too late to start now? Uh, no need to sugarcoat. Um, so, couple things. My first question would be, what anyone who's looking to get a BFA in dance, um, my question is always, what for? Um, especially if you're on the older side and you're thinking of like going back and you're going to be a little bit behind because most dance programs aren't cheap. Um, and so if it's something like, for example, with him, he wants to go on point and just he wants to do that for himself. That's something you could kind of do on your own. You could take your own uh, ballet classes with someone. You could take a uh, point like pre point classes where they really work with you on strengthening your ankles. And then you could take point classes. And so you don't necessarily have to have a BFA to do that. So I just would say, like, think about what it is that you actually want to do with that. Is it just for the enjoyment? And if so, I don't think you have to put that kind of money toward doing something like that. Um, sometimes it's just building, uh, your, um, your experience and strengthening yourself with the right people so that you don't hurt yourself, obviously, but, um, I don't think you need a BFA to dance on point. Do you have any advice on how to brand yourself as a dancer on social media? Yes, I do. <laughs> um, so I am in the process of doing this now because I am learning um, pretty much where I fit in the dance world. And for me, it just made sense for me to just brand myself. Um, so my first thing would be to find a social media platform that works for you. And that's kind of something that I work with people in the Dancers Moved by More Club on. I help them find which social media platform works for them, who they're trying to target, and what is it they're trying to get people to do. Because if you just want to build an audience just to be popular on social media, um, it can make it easy for you to just like do whatever seems like the cool thing to do, do whatever is popular. Um, and I don't think that's necessarily the way to like build toward, you know, developing a brand if that's what you want to do. Um, sorry, I keep moving in the wrong spot. Put this over here. Is this on? I think it's on. How do I know if it's on? Oh my God, y'all, I'm old. I, I do not do well with the lives. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, there we go. I wasn't live on Instagram. Um, but yeah, finding first, what is the social media platform that works for you? Works for you? What are your strengths? Are you good at taking photos? If so, Instagram might be the place for you. If you're good with video, YouTube might be the place for you. If you're good with conversation, a podcast might be better for you because you want the uh, content that you're putting out to really resonate with the people who are similar to you so that they follow whatever you're doing if that makes sense. So when, if it comes to the point where you are selling something, they'll be more likely to buy into it because they relate to you. Or if you are working with a brand, you want brands who align with your values and stuff like that. So yeah, first thing I would say to do is just find which social media platform works for you uh, instead of just which one is the most popular. Uh, uh, do oh. <laughs> Do you have, hey Karma, um, do you have any advice for me? I dance hip hop and at church all my life. I just started learning technique for jazz and ballet at 25. I never could afford dance until now. Um, I mean, if you want to continue doing that, just find some local classes who, who teach those styles and I think the biggest thing is just like, what are you trying to do with it? And that's the biggest question that I have to ask a lot of people when they ask me like do you have advice for me saying blah blah and my answer is I don't have advice until I know what you're trying to do with it so if you just want to become a better dancer then keep taking classes do stretches at home um, figure out ways for you to maybe find other dancers in your area who you get along with so you guys can practice together and session together and try things hey Evan what's up um, so yeah, it's all based off of what you're trying to do with it. I like to, I'm a big goal oriented person. So I always like to start with the end in mind and then work my way 
backwards. Um, so yeah, I would say, f what are you trying to do? If you can answer that for me. I'm a middle school teacher and hope to be a dance teacher one day at a school or studio. Sorry so long, but no one's been able to. Um, yeah, if you're trying to be a dance teacher, especially a dance teacher in your area, then you should try to take classes consistently at one studio that you would eventually like to teach at because they're going to educate you based on the style that they teach. So there are different styles of ballet. There's like Vaganova technique, which is a type of ballet. And then there's like all these different styles, almost like dialects of a different language. So if you train at one studio and become good at their style, then they could see that you are good at possibly teaching their style in the future. Um, and so it's all about like building a connection with your home studio or whatever studio that you dance at so that that could be an option in the future. Um, would you recommend getting a BFA in art or certifications? I am not certain on the dance studio owner part, honestly, because you don't need anything to be a dance studio owner. You don't need to have a BFA. You don't need to have anything except for knowledge of dance and how to be a good business owner. Because if you want to own a dance studio, a large portion of owning a dance studio is managing the building. You know, you have to pay a lease. There's a lease on a building. And so you have to make sure that the amount of students you have coming in can pay to upkeep the building. So, um, a lot of times it's not dependent on if you have a BFA or not. My BFA didn't even require me to take business courses. Um, and I do think a lot of business, because business is a field that is constantly changing, I don't think you necessarily need a business degree to do any of that stuff. You just need to constantly be researching and, and know your stuff um, and be good at teaching also. It's not enough just to like dance, to want to own a studio. You have to be good at teaching dancers, which means you have to be good at figuring out what things they're doing wrong, how to give corrections well, how to really look at their bodies and see what are the minute changes that need to happen. Um, so most people who are great dance teachers, they're not just good dancers. They have a good eye for teaching. Um, and that's something that has to be developed over time. And also it helps to just have had good teachers in the past. So you can kind of replicate that kind of, um, relationship with your students. I love that your coaching approach is what's your, oh, absolutely. Because I feel like with dancers, a lot of times, karma it can be like, they want to just do stuff because it seems cool. Um, and things aren't cool for long. So you got to know what it is that you're actually trying to build. I am trying to build a dance brand. I am trying to build really my own full on dance empire that includes content and products and all of this kind of stuff. And so for me, I like to start at the end and then work, with, work my way backwards. And so when people um, kind of ask me like, how how am I doing things? That's how I work is I start with the end in mind and then I work my way backwards. How can I make it as a professional dancer? I am 19. I am a beginner and dream of dancing in music videos and alongside music artists. Um, if you want to dance with artists and stuff like that, your biggest bet is going to be living in the LA area. Um, I will say it is hard. <laughs> that is how I, um, that is the road, the, the road that I tried doing. Um, and it works for some people. And for some people, it doesn't, I think for my specific dance style, it just didn't fit with what I am, which I, with what I naturally do well. Um, but if you are looking to get into the industry, you have to go where the industry is, unfortunately. Um, and that is LA right now. And when you're there, you have to, um, find find the style that works best with your natural way of moving. I feel like when people move to LA, they automatically are like, well, I have to take all of the hip hop classes and, you know, all of this stuff. And it's like, that's fine. But if your natural way of moving doesn't work with that, then it can be hard. Um, 
it can be hard to succeed in that area because it's not how your body, it's not how your body naturally functions. So yeah, I would say try doing a summer in LA first before you move. So when I um, want decided that I wanted to move to LA for the summer, I moved there for two months. And I actually stayed Millennium Dance Complex had at the time, I don't know if they still do, but they had like a summer, summer intensive program kind of thing. So I stayed actually in the owner of Millennium Dance Complex. I stayed in her pool house with like a bunch of other girls looking back on now, but looking back on that now, that was like such a fire hazard. <laughs> uh, but I stayed with them for two months and just lived in LA to see if I would even like living there. Um, and for that gave me an opportunity to try out the city, to try out the classes, to try out the people and just see if I could see myself living there. And then once I did, I was like, OK, now I can plan my move. Um, and that also kind of gives you time to see how the city is laid out and all that kind of stuff. So. Mm -hmm. In business administration, I've been dancing for years, but that's really great. Just join Thanks, you guys, for joining my channel uh, or subscribing to my channel. It's been fun. I've always watched YouTube stuff. I'm going to start doing more, like, YouTube tips videos, too, because, like I said, I'm all about people finding which platform works for them. And I think that there's enough room for everyone to succeed. And so if YouTube is going to be your way of, you know, building your platform, I want to kind of give some tips and stuff that I've learned along the way. I only really started taking YouTube seriously like a year ago. Um, and there are certain niches that grow faster than others. So mine has been on the slower side, but it is growing. And I'm excited to have you guys, you know, along with me. <laughs> oh, I did. Uh, yeah, uh, there's a lot of. So the thing also about auditioning in L.A. is like. Uh you're, you're not going to just go to an audition the first time and book something. That's typically not how it works. It takes building um, a relationship with a choreographer typically um, and having them see how you do their choreography for them to trust you with it, which is basically what booking a job is. Them saying, oh, I trust you with my choreography. So I did have, uh, Karma mentioned, an opportunity to audition for Jaquel Knight. Um, and that was because I had done, and he's Beyonce's choreographer. He's Meg Thee Stein's choreographer. Um, I had done an Adidas uh, event that he hosted. It was like him and Adidas hosting this event. And I had danced there and he saw me there and he was like, oh, you're really talented, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then I ended up going to an audition and he remembered me there. And had I not been on tour with Yuna, I um, would have booked that job. And so it was cool to A, have booked Yuna's job in the first place and know like, okay, I can book like a tour, but then to also know that other people also see my talent as well. It was like a win-win, um, but it took me building that relationship with him. It wasn't just me stepping in there and being amazing the first time, you know? Um, because these people in the industry, they are people, they're real human beings. They want to know that you can, that you're reliable, that you're enjoyable to be around, that you do their choreography well, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I didn't do very much industry work just because it wasn't a good fit for me. But um, that is what the road kind of looks like is constantly building relationships with choreographers. Um, let me see, did I skip anything? But yeah, what are you guys' plans for, what are you guys' goals for the new year? I am a huge goal setter, especially when it comes to like my business now. Uh, poor connection on Instagram, that's okay. Um, but yeah, what are you guys, what are you guys into? I'm gonna be doing more stretch videos because it seems like you guys really like those. I'm gonna try and keep them as fresh as I possibly can because uh, sometimes it can be hard um, to come up with like a new way to stretch the same thing. Um, set up. Ah, you wanna set up a Patreon channel and start using it to teach sensual dance lessons. Yeah, there's a lot of different platforms. 
um, for people to basically monetize their talents in different ways. I don't have a lot of experience with Patreon, but I know it's a good like feeder um, platform if you already have like a large or medium sized following to get them to buy into that. I will say I predict it would be hard to start something like that just from the jump. Like people want to know you first. They want to know that you make good stuff. Um, so that's where the creating content consistently comes in, um, which is another thing I help dancers in the Dancers Move by More Club do because um, it's not just about, you know, making the content. It's doing it on a consistent basis so that your audience builds trust with you and you can build a relationship with them. Um, but yeah, no, the the stretch videos are, are uh, popping. Apparently, you guys love stretching. So good to know, because literally, you guys, I will just set up my music and then I'll just I'll just start stretching. And I'm like, all right, that's a video. So a lot of these are just stretches that I naturally do because they work for me. So I'm like, if it works for me, hopefully it works for someone else. But I'm going to try to do more of them. I have an ab, like a core video coming up, like dancer core video with some like planks and stuff. Um, so I'll try. I'll, sometimes those can get a little stale for me. I like to like pop around and do different kinds of videos. So you guys will see like sometimes I'll do stretch videos. Sometimes I'll do business videos. And sometimes I'll do vlogs. Like I'm recording some stuff here while I'm at home. Um, just because I don't want to get bored. Because <laughs> creating content is can already be uh, a lot of work in itself in terms of like editing and stuff. So I just want to make sure I like the stuff that I'm putting out too. But yes, there will be more stretch videos. Uh, choreography and share more dance videos on Instagram and YouTube and attend more dance classes. I also want to teach more dance classes in 2021. Yeah, it's it's a really weird time, right, you guys? Like as far as teaching classes and stuff, because me personally, I hate teaching dance virtually which is why um, for me in the beginning of the year, I was like, oh, I'm gonna teach a dance class every month because I do wanna see my choreography on other dancers and I do like, like I enjoy teaching. But when this virtual stuff happened, I was like, y'all can, <laughs> can keep that. Uh, so I don't know what dance classes and stuff are gonna look like in 2021, but I think there is opportunity to be very creative in uh, how you deliver it to people. And I think those are the people that are going to succeed, the ones who are super creative um, in the dance teaching space and the people who are super niche heavy too. Like, uh, you know, if you're, if you say that you want to teach dance classes, it's much easier for someone to gravitate toward you if they know that your classes are specifically for them. So someone who teaches dance classes for, um, mom young for like young moms who have just had children or like who have young children that's a very specific niche and so it's easier for people to be attracted to someone who teaches that kind of stuff instead of just saying I teach everything for everyone because then you kind of teach for no one because no one actually knows who you're there for um, and so it's really important to know like who your target audience is when it comes to teaching classes and stuff like that. Um, I was central dance coach. You know, I gave me the strength to get out and talk to me. Yeah. Ooh, confidence. Can we talk about it? Can we talk about confidence, you guys? Because, uh, the key, honestly, the key to everything that you want to do, everything that you want to do is going to take you having confidence. And I'm actually working on, um, the lessons for the dancers moved by my moved by more club in January when we reconvene. Um, but I'm going to do a whole unit on confidence and things that can help you build your confidence. But I think one of the things that really going to help if you are trying to build your confidence is knowing your shit. You guys, if you're, if you're young, I'm sorry about the cursing, um, <laughs> but knowing your stuff, because if you know what you know, you know, it's easier to show up confident. If you're giving people fluff and you're kind of 
talking in circles and giving people the same generic dance steps and you're not taking time to really research and and find new interesting ways of moving or find people who are the um, who were the like trendsetters in certain genres and how genres have developed over time in dance. If you don't know your stuff, it's hard to be confident in it. So um, whatever it is that you're doing, if you really are into sensual dance, it's going to take also some research in uh, sensuality in as a, as a human being and what makes people feel sensual and how has sensuality maybe changed over time. Um, what does it look like now? And so when you're creating dances for that, you can really target the dances that you're making to how people feel sensual now or the psychology behind sensuality. Um, that's why I'm really, really big into, uh, <laughs> Mariah, you're funny. That's why I'm really big into um, psychology because I feel like psychology affects a lot of things that dancers do. It has a huge effect on creativity. We talk about the psychology of flow in the Dance Move by More Club because I think uh, having an understanding of flow and how it affects your creativity is huge in terms of uh, helping you create choreography or helping you um, build a business. Um, so yeah, research, know your stuff. Knowing your stuff will help you feel that plane will help you feel more confident in what you're uh, in what you're doing. Keeping promises with yourself will help you build confidence. Absolutely. When you prove to yourself, karma says keeping promises where you're with yourself will help you build confidence, confidence too. And that's so true. Also proving to yourself that you can do something that you set your mind on will help you build confidence. Because the problem is a lot of people, they don't trust themselves with their dreams. They don't trust themselves with their goals and aspirations. And so they get an idea and they think, oh, that's really great, but I'm not ready for that yet because they haven't had enough situations where they've placed themselves in to step up to the plate, do what they said they were going to do, and then feel good about it because they did it. Um, and that is a huge part of building your confidence is honestly trusting yourself, building trust within yourself to do the things you, you say you're gonna do. Um, because obviously when you have confidence in yourself and you trust yourself to do them, it's much more easier for other people to trust you and to have confidence in you. Yeah, so all those 10 years of experience that you have, give your build yourself a, a, a resume of um, things that you've learned or like a, a folder, a file of things that you've learned over time. Um, God, I live next to an airport, you guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it is so loud. I'm going to wait for it to pass. That sounds like a jet. Yeah, so... Um, building up, writing down your knowledge. We all know things. We all have done things, especially if we've danced for long periods in our life. There are things that we've learned along the way that we haven't necessarily codified. And so that's something else I work with people in the club on is, okay, how, what knowledge do you have? Let's put it together. Let's put it plain in writing so that when we decide we want to deliver it to other people, we know how to package it well. Um, because yeah, it's easy It's easy to do something for 10 years and then still feel like, oh, but I don't know enough. You know enough, especially if um, you already are doing that thing and you're doing it well, you know enough. And uh, the stuff that you know is gonna help you obtain more information, but you don't know what you know until you write it out, until you have a plan, or at least until you, um, until you put it in writing. Uh, I've finally decided to commit to dance. I love heels specifically, but I've noticed all my favorite heels dancers have lots of ballet experience. I'm scared I won't progress learning at home. You will progress learning at home, um, but I will say that ba having ballet experience helps a ton. I think honestly the reason why I love dancing in heels is because I'm able to use my ballet lines that I get from my technical background. 
But I will say that is why I do these videos online because I know that there are some people who are too scared to step into a ballet studio for the first time um, or too scared, too scared to step into a ballet class. And so that's why I have videos. Hey, Alan. That's why I have videos on uh, like how to straighten your knees and the correct way to straighten your knees, the correct way to point your feet, the correct way to have turnout. All those videos are on my channel because um, – I know it can be hard to either get ballet training or it can be intimidating to get ballet training. Um, but those things are going to make a huge, huge difference in your, in your heels technique. And I trained with Aisha Francis when I was in LA. She isn't teaching right now because most people aren't teaching right now, honestly, in LA. Um, but she also has a very technical background. And so I feel like when I take her class, I'm like, oh, you get me. You know, some people's classes are a little bit less technical when it comes to heels. And it's based off of what they did when they were growing up and learning. So she did a lot of technical stuff and jazz stuff. And so I connect with her class and her choreography a lot, which is why me dancing heels, my when I dance, it looks more jazzy. It looks more technically, you know, it has that technical aesthetic. To it. Uh... I wrote a whole book, 200 pages on sensual dance for the everyday person, turning it into a series of workshops online. Yep. Turn it into a couple things. There is beauty in uh, repurposing your content in different ways. And that's actually something I want to do more in 2021 is take some of the stuff that I've already done that's pretty, pretty decent in terms of the content itself and just, uh, you know, figure out different ways to disperse it because people are different kinds of learners. There's people who learn, and we all know this, like people who learn better visually versus like, you know, just reading something versus like hearing it versus kinesthetically like in the body. So you want to um, try and create things like say the same message for different kinds of learners. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, thanks for watching those. The ankle strengthening one is honestly, that's a good one. I'm not even gonna lie, I'm gonna toot my own horn on that one. Toot toot. Um, because my I felt my arch was dropping because I have naturally uh flat feet, so um. I do like foot strengthening exercises and stuff to help my feet when I can feel them kind of going through it. And so that's where that video came from. So hopefully it actually does help you guys. And um, if you have like arch cramps from it, using the lacrosse ball can help kind of like roll it out a little bit. Hmm. But yeah, I've loved that I've also gotten to... Um, meet a couple of you guys via zoom um usually when people are like interested in the club or like just wanting some direction they either will like hit me up in my dms or they will sign up for a coffee date on my website so my coffee dates are where like i can just talk to you directly in zoom and we can kind of plan out things and some people do kind of like a rolling how the progress is going um, but sometimes it's just for me to, you know, see if maybe they'd be a good fit for the club. And so we just chat there. So if you are looking to like, you know, get some help, uh, either hit me up in my DM for a coffee date or, uh, go on my website is where you can actually just like schedule one directly. Um, and yes, explore new styles abundantly tea. I... You know, I have a very specific background in dance, which is mostly ballet and modern, but I love movement. And I've learned that some people love dance because they like to be on stage, which is totally fine. That's not me. I like dance because I like moving and I like how it feels in my body. So I love trying new styles just to try it, um, even if I'm not the best at it. And it, it kind of tunes you into different ways that other people are moving that can help your own style as well, um, which is something that when you, if you do decide to like get a BFA for people who are thinking about, uh, you know, going to college for dance, I would say that's your biggest job when you're in college for dance is to figure out what your own unique movement style is. Um, like what's your natural way of moving? 
Uh, to book appointments, I use Calendly on my website to book uh, coffee dates. Um, people can go on there. It's like a monthly thing that you pay for. Um, and there's a way for you to add the Calendly cal calendar into your website if you have a website. Um, and so I have people schedule through that. Um, yeah. Or sometimes I'm just like, you know, let's set up a Zoom. It just, it just depends. But usually it's Calendly for appointments. Mm. Is that it, you guys? This poor IG Live is struggling. But yeah, so in the new year, what can you expect from Galen Larice? You can expect uh, more business content for sure, because as I'm learning stuff, I am going to share it with you guys, especially because I feel like a lot of the stuff, um, the information is out there, but it's not. Uh, palpable for artistic people all the time. Uh, very boring. It can be very uh, white American male. You know, <laughs> let's you know, let's change up the way it's presented sometimes. So yeah, more business content. Uh, what am I looking forward to in 2021? The growth. I have put in some serious work last year, and I I am excited to continue putting in that work. Um, I want to hopefully by the end of next year, get to the point where I'm able to maybe hire, do my first hire, um, so that I can have some help within my business. And so I'm not doing every single thing, um, because I know as a business owner, it's important to know when to outsource, um, so that I am not so bogged down in the business that I can't work on business. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's something I'm looking forward to in 2021. This is my dad. Hopefully he's not hella loud when he comes in the door. Um, what else? As a beginner dancer that is learning at home, it can be in very intimidating to try and navigate where to start with your training. Do you have any advice on how to organize and schedule my training? From home? Hmm, how to organize and schedule your training from home. My first question would be, are you recording yourself or are you using a mirror? I think if you're trying to elevate your dancing. Oh, the questions are on uh, YouTube, Mariah. I'm a, uh, but if you have a question also that you want to ask, you can just put it in the Instagram chat too. Um, what was I saying? Oh, do you have a mirror? Do you have something that you're, or, or are you filming yourself so that you can check? And you're not filming yourself just to see yourself look cute. You're filming yourself to see, are my lines straight? Are my knees straight when I'm doing this move? Are my feet pointed when I'm doing this? And you have to be honest with yourself and say either yes or no. Because it can be cool to be like, oh, I'm going to take three classes today, two classes tomorrow, and a class after that. And it's like, that's fine. But if you're not actually looking at how you execute the movement and fixing it and making corrections for yourself, then you're not actually going to improve. And so that's something, um, yes, if you don't have a mirror, just start recording. Start um, recording yourself uh, from different angles, too, because it's easy to fake certain angles. Um but yeah, recording is a big thing. I have so many recorded videos of myself dancing on my phone, you guys, that you will never see just in there because uh, I'm checking myself and seeing how I can fix fix my lines. Um, and if you do have a mirror at home, perfect. Use it all the time um, to help you adjust how you're executing your movement. Um Feel all over the place with what, Coco? What do you feel all over the place with? Oh, I'm so glad you're liking the live, though. I didn't know if this was a good idea or not, honestly, because I didn't know if anyone would show up. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm that kid that's like, I don't want to have a birthday party because no one's going to show up. Uh, <laughs> but um, I figured this would be the best way to, like, answer stuff. Like, really answer stuff. Because I, I would love to type responses to you guys all day. But I really, it ain't in me. What else? I have? 
come up with a hundred dance challenges. How do you get to make? Oh, dance challenges. Yeah, that's a way to keep things interesting. Um, also, if you start to get bored with dancing, it may mean that it's time for you to find new music. Uh, oftentimes, if I haven't been in the mood to dance, it's because I haven't really been searching and exploring uh, new artists and new stuff that's out. I'm really into, um, I would say it's more like a funky R&B sound right now. So a lot of like Omar Apollo, a lot of um, Duckworth. Uh, I try to, I for my old videos, I was putting... Um, what are they called? Playlists along with them. But I wasn't sure if people were listening to them. And that was kind of a lot of work. So if you guys want me to keep doing that, comment on the stretch videos. Hey, I like the uh, playlist and I'll keep doing it. Um, but that I've, I, I always love finding new music. And that's kind of how I stay inspired to do more dance stuff. Try a remix or cover version of your favorite. Yep. Remixes or cover versions or acoustic versions also. Um, and sometimes it just takes going on YouTube and finding other people's choreography and seeing what they're choreographing to, um, and find people who are super popular, right, on YouTube as far as their choreography. There, there are other people who are, like, smaller. It's finding the smaller people and finding what they're choreographing to, um, and see what kind of stuff they're listening to. If I have, yeah, so I may, I may do more playlists. Um, hold on, where's my phone? I love you guys, OG, but I'm gonna I'm gonna turn off this live now so I can tell them what I listen to. Hey Dad. It's my dad's birthday today, y'all. Uh download the video. Um but, 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 but. who do you guys like listening to while we're at it? While we're on music, who do you guys like listening to? So the whole uh recent Omar Apollo album, fantastic, a really nice funky uh, R&B-ish sound. Um, they said happy birthday, Dad. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> he said thank you. Um, let's see, Mah Mahalia, Brockhampton, I listen to Brockhampton, James Vickery. If you are really into vocals, James Vickery, uh, very talented. Um, Black Party, I like Black Party a lot. I have a bunch of stuff on Spotify and Eclectic Taste. Yes, Twigs is nice. Okay, I need to listen to more Mahalia because I don't. I only have one song on my. Um, liked songs playlist by her but i need to go listen to her other stuff i'm telling you guys duckworth is really good really good stuff uh who else but yeah that's what i'm into i'm into like smooth and then if i'm working out then you know a nice twerk jam i'm actually like listening to omarion oh, has a new album interesting i'll give that a listen haven't uh, listened to some Omarion in quite some time. Um, I like Melly, if you're into more of like a rap moment. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll do, maybe I'll do more uh, playlists in the future. Do you guys have any other questions? We're pushing on 45 minutes, so I'm probably gonna wrap it up soon. Mutual. Involved. Okay, I'm gonna look those up. Those are by Mahalia. I'll look those up. I will look those up. But yeah, you guys. Um, any other questions before I before I go? Thanks you guys again for subscribing to my channel and just being a part of this whole journey with me. It's been fun. I'm getting to know some of you guys. If you're uh, in the club and stuff, I'm going to try to do better about posting on Instagram in the new year. I really am. Um, just because I know some of you guys like to hang out on there. I do stories more right now. I'm more like in the stories. Um, but eventually I'll probably do more. Yes. I'm, I'm working more on more vlogs. I'm recording a vlog right now that I'm home. Um, and I'll try to do more, like, as my entrepreneurial stuff grows, I'll do more stuff related to that, too, so you guys can see what that's like. 
Um, but yeah, thanks for joining you guys. I will uh, talk to you soon. Have a good week. Have a blessed week this week, you guys. And work hard or relax harder. Whatever you need. Whatever your body needs. Uh, and I'll talk to you guys soon.